Collectors and welcome to Long's Toys. Today we are taking a look at Shoto Double Cross Common Rider 07. Taking a look at the case breakdown here, you can see that we have Common Rider Decayed Complete Form, Common Rider D End, Common Rider Valkyrie Rising Cheetah, Common Rider Baron, then we have Apollo Geist and Gamel, one of the uh greeds from O's, and then we have our accessory box here. So Looking pretty good. We'll take a look at a couple of these boxes. The format really hasn't changed since the first wave. Can't believe we're already on wave seven. Seems crazy to me, but gives you the breakdown over here on the side. A couple pictures of the figure here on the back. Then we got D end. Then we got Valkyrie. This one definitely in need of some paint. That's kind of a bummer, but we'll see how it is once we get it all out of the packaging. Uh, really excited for Baron. I think Baron looks pretty fantastic. I guess he got all the paint. Sorry, Valkyrie. And then we have, what's up next? Is the box next? No, this goes, well, anyway, it doesn't really matter. Here is Apollo Geist. And then we have Gamel. So making some good progress on our Greed collection here for O's. And then we have the accessory box. So it looks like you're going to wind up with a couple doubles if you buy a full case. So you get duplicates of each of these three. But I'm going to go ahead and get all of these out of the packaging and assembled. Not too much assembly, but pop their heads on and hands and whatnot. So going to take care of all that and then we'll take a closer look. So here they are out of the packaging, fully assembled. Now when I say fully assembled, again, it's really just popping on the heads and picking a set of hands. But I will say, we'll start over here with D-End Complete. Uh, there were some stickers. There were actually four stickers. One, two, three, four. Uh, I get it. They can't really paint as intricate as that is, so I totally get it. And honestly, it was just four stickers. It was the only stickers in the entire set. And they're nice, flat, smooth surfaces, so they went on pretty easily. It really wasn't that big of a deal. But we'll see if we can take a look there. So you got the one sticker there for the card on the head. And then you have a sticker on each sleeve. And then one big sticker across the center. And they came out pretty good. They applied pretty well. And I think they'll be all right. Overall, the paint looks pretty good. Nice magenta metallic paint there. He comes with uh, the normal version of the ride booker attached to his waist here on his belt. That comes in the box with the figure. The sword version and the gun version are in the uh, expanded accessory box, so if you're just buying the figure, you'll just get the compact version here on his belt. That is included. These two come separately. But yeah, I mean, pretty standard articulation for Shoto Double Cross. You have a really nice ball joint for the head. You can look down, look up slightly, uh, tilt side to side slightly, certainly look side to side, no problem. Now with these shoulder pads, you know, they're molded in. They give, they're a little bit malleable plastic, and they're obviously attached into the body here. So you can move the arms up a little bit, and they have a little bit of give to them. But it does hinder articulation ever so slightly. But you can go back, uh, forth, out to the side. There's a ball joint there. You have the bicep swivel. I would say maybe slightly over 90 degrees there in the elbow. Now the wrists can swivel because you're just pegging them in. And I'll go through the alternate hands that he comes with in a moment. You have a ball joint in the torso, as well as a ball joint at the waist. Then you have a ball joint in the hip. Kick decently out to the side. I don't know, some, something about these, they don't kick forward all that much, which is kind of weird. Uh, they can go back a little bit, but that's about as far forward as he can kick, which is kind of strange. Uh, thigh swivel there. I would say definitely over 90 degrees there in the knee. Ball joint for the ankle, and then you have a toe swivel as well. So like I said, pretty standard for Shoto Double Cross, but they look good. Really nice paint applications. All the silver down here on the legs looks really sharp. The metallic magenta looks nice. No paint really on the back of the torso. You can kind of see that it stops about halfway. Which is not something I love, but I understand that they have to cut corners certain places. I mean, they did the silver pretty much everywhere you'd want it, so I appreciate that. The silver on the arms goes all the way around, so again, appreciate that as well. So, And the head. 
But yeah, overall looks pretty good. Pretty happy with this one. Next up we have D-End. Now you can see here that we have the Neo D-End driver. The regular one is also included, but both of these are in the accessory box. So he does not come with any accessories on his own. Both versions of the DN driver are in the accessory box. I opted to go for the blue uh, Neo DN driver. Just pops. I really like that blue there. It looks really good. And overall, all of his paint applications look pretty good as well. Like I said, this uh, Complete was the only one to have stickers. Everyone else is fully painted. Same articulation. He has the gold bands go all the way around the wrist, which I appreciate. But again, stops about halfway. But the head's completely painted, which I think looks pretty cool. Now, the nice thing is he does come with this piece here, which is, of course, the little card holder that he has on the waist. And he does come with a new, or I should say a second version, which I actually thought was kind of cool. So if we pop this second version on... It's actually like an open version, so it can look like he's grabbing cards. It's a little hard to get the arm back there, but you can make it look like he's trying to grab cards out of the open holder. I thought that was kind of neat. Just a fun little extra accessory. This does come with the figure. It is not in the accessory box. Just the two uh, DN drivers are. So I thought that was kind of cool. Has the closed and open version, so you can make it look like he is drawing cards out of there. And he does come with a hand holding a card. I'll get back to that in a moment. He also suffers a little bit from the shoulder pads, you know, just being so bulky that it does hinder the ball joint at the shoulder there. So that's kind of a bummer. But otherwise, I think he looks really sharp. All the paint looks really good. And otherwise, he has all the same articulation. He's, you know, probably uses the same body as uh, Decayed here, if I'm looking at this. Yeah, I would say... That is the exact same lower half, just painted differently. So he's going to have the same articulation limitations, unfortunately. But yeah, he looks good. I really like the Neo DN driver. I think that looks really cool. That blue really pops. So I like that quite a bit. Let me show off the hands for these two because I did skip that. So here up, I can't remember which one. I think, I guess it doesn't really matter. I think they're exactly the same, but... You get a closed fist set of hands. You get kind of an open posing set of hands as well as a like weapon grasping set of hands. So I have um, D-end using one of each. So this must be D-end set. And then you also have a card holding hand for both hands. So that's really cool. So you can make it look like, you know, he's holding it in one hand or you could try to get the hand back like he's drawing this out of the open. Like you could try to position it so it looks like the card is actually coming out of here. That's kind of cool, so I appreciate that. And then over here uh, for Decayed, I would not be surprised if these are exactly the same. I think they are. Yeah, I think D-End and Decayed have the exact same set of hands. So, which is fine. I mean, it makes sense. You know, they both have cards, so they would have the card holding hands. I think that makes total sense. But yeah, both of them, pretty great. Really nice paint applications. Shoulder pads do limit articulation. Kind of my only complaint and even the stickers for Decade Complete weren't that bad. So next up, we have Valkyrie Rising Cheetah. Now, I think the reason that this is missing all of the paint applications for the black accents for the spots is because all of this gold is paint, if I'm not mistaken. I could be completely wrong about that, but I think this is all paint, and I think that's why they had to skimp because they couldn't kind of paint on top of paint, just the budget wasn't there. So they decided that the, you know, goldish orange was more important, which I agree. You could probably get like a little Gundam marker and just fill in a few of these spots, because it's really not too much. It's just like these kind of indented spots, and the indentations are there. So I might try to do that, just get like a little Gundam marker or something and just kind of fill in these couple spots. I think that would really make it pop. But overall, still looks pretty good. Helmet here, pretty nicely detailed and painted. I think that looks good. Now, I have her here with the attached shotgun. Again, this comes in the uh, expanded weapon pack, so she does not come with this. But you can uh, take the driver off of the belt buckle and pop this into her hand as well. So if you want her to use... Uh, I'm completely blanking on the name of this. Shot riser. There we go. 
so she can hold that as well. So if you want her to use the shot riser, she can hold that. And then it just kind of clips onto the belt buckle, which is kind of nice because in the, I think it was the Soto versions, they had like a separate belt buckle with it molded in, and then there was the gun, and then you had to get a separate belt buckle that wasn't on there when she was holding it. So much easier to just have it clip on here, go in the hand, or clip back on here. So I really like how they did that. I think that makes total sense. I think it did the same thing for Vulcan as well, if I remember in one of the previous sets. And then you have the, whoops, I just shot that across. Where did that go? Wow, that's gone. All right. Oh, here it is. I found it. Okay. <laughs> that really launched off of there. That was crazy. Uh, you do have the two uh, progress key holders on the side. You can remove them if you wish. They just peg in. So if for some reason you don't want them on there, you can remove them. But otherwise, you got one on each side. And because they're just pegged in, they do move around a little bit, which I don't love, but not a big deal. Now, she's got all the same articulation, ball joint in the head. Obviously, she's got a little bit more movement here in the shoulders because her shoulder pads are not nearly as big. Bigger on this side, of course, but not as big on the left side, her left side, I should say. And then you have, you know, the bicep swivel, elbows, that's all the same. The one thing I will say, so if we take a look at the hands that she comes with, she comes with four sets of hands, which is great. Three of them are molded in white plastic. For whatever reason, the weapon gripping hands are molded in black and then painted white. And I don't know why they do this. I've seen this in some previous sets as well. You're literally proving to me in the same box that you can mold the hands out of white. So why can't you just mold them all out of white? When you paint white paint onto a black hand, over time that is going to rub off. Especially when it's a hand that has to grasp weapons. So I just feel like... Why are we doing this? This just seems like, you know, you're setting this up for failure because, you know, it's kind of difficult to get some of these weapons in here. And I just feel like over time that's going to rub the paint off. And you're literally proving to me in the same box that you can just mold hands out of white plastic. So why? I'm assuming that they're doing them on a sprue of something else, you know, with other character hands from the same set in a larger sprue or something like that. I'm not 100% sure. But I just don't understand why you couldn't just expand. You're already putting white plastic in molds for these hands. Like, don't do that. I don't know why. You'll, we'll see something similar for Baron in a minute, unfortunately. But, yeah, I'm just not a huge fan of that. Like, I'd rather everyone just be molded out of the right color plastic because I don't want to have to deal with paint chipping. And I, I just... Especially with white. Because painting white on top of black is very... You have to really glob the paint on so you, the black underneath doesn't bleed through. And, uh... Yeah. Just a weird decision. Just a weird decision. But the figure itself, I think, looks pretty good. Definitely could use, like I said, a gun to mark or something just to pop on those spots to really make it pop. But other than that, I think she looks pretty cool, and I'm happy to add her to the Zero One collection so far. All right, next up, definitely my favorite of the wave. I am a little biased, but here is Baron. Baron looks great. I think the paint on the head came out fantastic. That looks really sharp. All that silver and red. And the yellow, unfortunately, did bleed a little bit on the side of the head on mine. That's really unfortunate. But just looking at it head on, you don't notice that. But it is kind of egregious. I did get a second one in the box. I honestly might check it out to see because that's kind of bad. Um, but again, just looking at it head on, you don't see that luckily. So the head from the front looks really sharp. All of the silver and gold paint on the banana armor looks amazing. Now, it is a little bit of a bummer that this is just done in red plastic and they didn't paint this. I get it. I understand that. And again, from the front, you're not going to see it. That's a little bit of a bummer as well. Uh, but we have the silver here on the gauntlets, which looks pretty good. The silver here on the thighs. Again, wish it went all the way around. I get it. Um, but for the most part, I think he looks pretty great. You have the banana spear. This is in the accessory box. Does not come with the figure, but looks good. Pretty happy with how that turned out. But again, his grasping hands are molded in black and then painted red. Again, we have red molded plastic hands on the other side. So I don't know why this decision keeps being made. But the driver looks pretty good. That's molded in black plastic. I think that looks pretty sharp. And then again, all the same articulation as the others. His shoulders, not too bad, honestly. Uh, you can still get most arm poses that you'd want to get out of there. They don't. This one is really not much at all. This one's a little bit more. 
but you can get it out of the way. But yeah, Baron looks great. Aside from the, the paint flub over here and the uh, red painted black hand, I think he looks fantastic. Really happy with that. And then just to show you his other hands, of course he has the closed fist set of hands, the open set of hands, and then the grasping set of hands. But you can almost see, like, this hand wasn't painted all that great, or maybe some of it's rubbing off already. You can see the black underneath. It just it just makes them look dirty. You know what I mean? Like, it's just when... When the paint kind of smudges like that, it just kind of makes them look dirty, which is a real shame. And that's why I just really don't like the look of that. But what am I going to do at this point? Next up, we have Apollo Geist, which I have to admit is a character I'm not super familiar with. Apparently, he is from Foundation X, and he was in one of the Decade movies, which is why I believe he was included here. Uh, head sculpt looks pretty good. Nice paint applications there. Good range of motion. Now... The cape piece is like molded onto the body, which is nice because I feel like otherwise this would move around a whole lot. So I like that that's kind of included. The only problem is it kind of makes it difficult to, like you can't make the legs go back at all because this thing, like maybe if you pitched them forward a little bit, but because that's kind of stationary and you can't remove it, it makes it a little weird to pose the legs. Um, but still get a decent range of motion out of the ball joint there at the hip. He's got knees. I like all the molding for the legs, though. I think that looks really sharp. He still has the toes. Very minimal. Obviously, you know, the paint, the paint budget for this guy went into some of the other figures because he's basically got this belt, this cape piece, and then the helmet. Everything else is just black, which is fine. I mean, you know, that's what the character looks like. And that's why they do these kinds of things. As I knock Baron over, don't fall over. But he comes with this sword, or I should say this sword is in the accessory set. He does not come with any items. I believe this is his as well. It's just kind of like a rifle, because uh, I'm really not sure who else this would go to. This was also in the accessory box. And then he's got this massive, like, wheel shield thing, which I guess he's supposed to grasp it there in the center. Um... But it's so big and so heavy. I mean, he can hold it. And I just, that's not even a gripping hand. Like, I just have it kind of wedged onto this other hand like this. And it, it honestly, it's not too bad. If I'm just going to put it on a shelf, it would probably hold up like this. If I move it around a little bit, it's going to fall off, obviously. But this thing has got some weight to it. This thing is pretty solid. So, I don't know how well a gripping hand would hold on to it. But it's definitely got some heft. Now, also in the accessory box, he comes with an alternate head which has some blue paint, and I think that looks really sharp. I kind of like that one better. I might switch them. It's very uh, easy to pop them on and off. Pop that one off. Pop this one on. Pretty simple there. So, yeah, really cool. I like that a lot. Really fun little extra head there. But yeah, there's not too much to him in terms of paint applications, but what they did do uh, did pretty well. And I like the cape. I like that it's attached because I feel like it would be too loose otherwise. But then, like I said, it does have the drawback of limiting some posability. But for the most part, still pretty good. Um, let me show you his alternate hands. Where are his alternate hands? I think it's these. So he's got these two pointer finger hands that I'm not 100% sure what they're for. Uh, but then, of course, closed fist. And then he's got uh, gripping hands as well as an open set of hands. I've got one of each on him right now. So... I don't know what the pointing hands are for. I assume it's relevant to the character in the media that he appeared in, but I do not. I personally do not know. But yeah, I mean, if you think about the fact that the accessory box has this, the alternate head, and then two weapons for him, it's pretty good. He's definitely getting representation in the uh, accessory box, taken over quite a bit of it actually. So definitely can trick him out. He looks pretty great. Next, we will move on to last, but certainly not least, we have Gamel. This guy looks great. I mean, they did a really nice job with this. He took on a lot of the paint applications as well. The head sculpt, I think, looks pretty good. Nice range of motion there. You can really kind of tilt this a lot side to side, front to back, look side to side. Really nice movement there. All of this detail on the chest is really nicely painted, as well as down here in the abdomen. Then he's got like these really giant uh, like forearm gauntlets with spikes and whatnot. Very, very cool. Nice detailing here on the back. So his articulation is a little different. Um, because he has this giant piece here, it does hinder 
his arm movement a little bit, but you can come front to back, no problem. Bicep swivel there like that. Uh, you can bend at the elbow. Now, it does seem like you should be able to rotate the forearm as well, especially on this side. But I don't know that we can or can't. Uh, I've tried, but I don't want to break it, and it doesn't really feel like it wants to. So I guess he just has to have his hand out like this. So as much as you might want to kind of turn this, and I mean, I guess you can use the bicep swivel, but then your elbow joints off, so it looks a little weird. Um, but it is what it is. He's still got the abdomen ball joint and the waist ball joint, and then he can't really kick forward or out to the side or back really at all. Uh, really limited range of motion there in the hip uh, because he's got these gigantic thighs. But you do have a thigh swivel. You have 90 degrees pretty much there at the knee. You do have a ball joint for the ankle. And then he does still have the toe movement. I didn't think he was going to. When I first looked at this, it looked pretty solid to me. But you can see the hinge there. So that's pretty cool. But yeah, it's a great looking figure. I just, I kind of wish he had another swivel like right here, right above... Well, I guess I should say right below the elbow, but still looks great. And then he only comes with uh, two sets of hands. He's got an open set of hands and a closed fist set of hands. I put one of each on him right now. And of course, they're color coded to match the section of his body that they appear in. But yeah, really cool figure. Looks really good. Really happy with how he turned out. I think this is a pretty good wave, maybe not as strong as some of the other waves that we've had, but it's definitely some good figures in here nonetheless. Baron looks fantastic, definitely my favorite of the wave. Gamel a close second, I think he came out pretty great as well. Valkyrie does look good, and I understand that with this orangish metallic paint, you know, taking up half the figure, that's why they couldn't also paint the black spots for the cheetah. You know, maybe that's something I can touch up myself with a Gundam marker or something like that. And I think that would really bring this kind of to fruition and just be a perfect figure. Because otherwise, it's very good. The molding, the paint that we do have, that all looks really sharp. I like how the uh, shot riser can just pop off the belt, go right in the hand. Very simple way of doing that. Uh, nothing wrong with Decade and D-End. I just feel like we've gotten so many versions of them over the years. I don't really need any more. I mean, yes, technically these have more articulation than the previous versions because they have that toe bend. But I've just gotten so many Decades and DNs. I just, I don't think I need any more. I guess technically Decade Complete doesn't pop up nearly as much as Decade does. And like I said, there's nothing wrong with them. They look great. The paint applications are sharp. I just, I just don't need any more of them in my opinion. And Apollo Geist, again, nothing wrong with him. I just don't have a strong connection to that character. Don't know much about him. Looks good. What we get is fine. Just, you know, he's not going to be my favorite. I just don't know much about him. So, again, maybe not the strongest wave we've ever gotten, but certainly not bad, and there's definitely some fantastic figures in here. And really, there's no bad figures in here. It's just ones that I'm personally excited for versus others. So, all of these are great figures. You know, maybe not the best articulation on some with those large shoulder pads, and for whatever reason... Uh, Decade and D-End can't seem to kick forward all that well, but then again, a lot of these kind of can't, so I don't know. Uh, but in any case, I do think it's a nice set. I definitely think it's worth checking out. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Let me know who's your favorite. Is there one from this wave that you were definitely looking forward to, or is there something coming in the next wave that you're excited for? I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and as always, thanks so much for watching.